scripture reading will come from 1 Corinthians chapter 11, starting at verse 23 through the 30th. That is 1 Corinthians chapter 11, starting at verse 23. All those able to stand, please stand. Please say amen. amen. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus the same night in which he was betrayed took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup. When he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread, and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. For let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause, many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. I read from 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23 through 30. Blessed be to hear and the reading the word for the edification of his soul. Let us pray. Gracious and kind, Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus, Father, we come now, Father, thank you this morning, Lord Jesus. Father, Lord Jesus, Father, we just ask, Father, that you just bless the man of God. Bless those that are uh, that came this morning, Father, to praise your name, Lord Jesus. Father, we just ask that you just bless those that are coming from far and near, Lord Jesus. Father, bless those that have not, Lord Father. Father, we just ask that you just touch those, Father. We just ask these and all blessings in your son, Jesus' name. Amen. Good morning, saints. You're as glad as I am. If you are, you sing along with me. I'm glad to be in the service. I'm glad to be in the service. I'm glad to be in the service. One more time. He didn't have to let me live. He didn't have to let me live. I'm glad to be in the service. One more time. One more time. I'm glad to be in the service. I'm glad to be in the service. I'm glad to be in the service one more time. He didn't have to let me live. He didn't have to let me live. But I'm glad to be in the service one more time. I'm glad, come on now. I'm glad to be in the service. I'm glad to be in the service. I'm glad to be in the service. One more time. He didn't have to let me live. He didn't have to let me live. I'm glad to be in the service. One more time. 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 I'm glad to be in the service. One more time. You don't sound like it. All right. Thank you. We turn everything over now to the people. To our Minister Betty, yes. Amen. Good morning, Pine Grove. Good morning, good morning. I am truly glad to be in the service one more time. It's good to see you and it's good to be seen. We welcome everyone this morning, those that are here, those that will be watching on our, our live stream. 
God, we thank you for another opportunity to come before you. God, we feel your presence already. God, stay in the building. Don't leave us, God. God, we need you this morning like never before. God, they say it's a heat wave out there, but the kind of heat we want in here, God, brings miracles. The kind of heat we're looking for in here, God, brings healings. God, we need you right here, right now. And we welcome you and we thank you, God, for your presence. We're going to move right along, but uh, we're about to call the pastors up for announcements. And um, after our announcement, Sister April will follow him with a song. But I just want you to, I just want to give you a little reminder that on last Sunday, Pastor made announcements. And, and Minister Ebony Pedraza came behind us, came behind him and said, the announcement has been made. And, and, and I just want you to know, those of you that were here to understand what the announcement was, the announcement was that he welcomed God in the place. The announcement was that he knew God to be a healer. The announcement was that he knew that everything I need, God will provide. I just want you to know that I came to RSV because I got my invitation. So I'll follow with me this morning. Lord everybody. Praise the Lord everybody. I'm going to need y'all to be my choir today, okay? All right. I know I've been changed. I know I've been changed. You Sign my name. Well, I know I've been changed. I know I've been changed. You know that I know. Sign my name. Well, if you don't believe that I've been redeemed, you know the angels in heaven done. Sign my name. Well, follow me down to that old Jordan stream. You know. Angels in heaven done sign my name. Well, I know I've been changed. You know that I know I've been changed. You know that I know. You know the angels in heaven but done sign my name. name. Well, I stepped in the water, and the water was cold. Well, you well. know the angels in heaven done sign my name. Well, it chilled my body. My soul, you know the angels, angels in heaven done sign my name. Well, I know I've been changed. You know that I know I've been changed. You know that I know. 
been chosen, heaven done, sign my name, well I know I've been changed, well I know I've been changed, you know that I know the angels in heaven done sign my name. Well, the angels in heaven done sign my name. Well, the angels in heaven done sign my name. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody. Come on and give God a hand clap of praise. Oh, you can do better than that. Come on and give God a hand clap of praise. How many believe and how many know that the angels in heaven done signed your name? If you know that he changed your name, everything ought to be all right. I don't know about you, but I'm glad that he changed my name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I know I've been changed. My God, my God. Good morning, those of you that are in Radio Land. Well, I should say those of you that are on Facebook and those of you that are on YouTube. We come into you this morning a little bit late and out because uh, this morning you will not get it at your regular time, but you are getting it a little bit later. So we greet you whatever time it is that you are watching. It might be night. It might be late. But we greet you, you that are on YouTube, you that are on Facebook. You might be watching me while you get ready to go to bed, but that's all right, too. Amen. Amen. Certainly, we thank um, Elijah this morning and Brother Porter and Sister Porter, the second said, amen. Uh, Elijah and, and wife, Ashley, they are taking over this morning. So we are thankful to you this morning. Amen. Amen. This month, August, how many made it in August? Are there any birthdays in August? Amen. You in August? Hey, all August birthdays, come on up here. All August birthdays. My Lord, my Lord. This was the best month of the year. Come on, August. All right. Yeah, yeah. Come stand right. Come on across here. Jesse, get her. Tell her, tell her where to stand, Jesse. Come on. Amen. Let me tell you why August was so special. Number one, this was my first child. <laughs> His birthday is on tomorrow. Amen. Oh, Tuesday. Well, whatever day it is. Amen. But the, what makes it so great, and Brother Payne is back there. He's standing back there. His birthday is this month. But what really makes August so special, August the 30th. That's my birthday, y'all. Amen. Amen. So all of you, amen, let's sing happy birthday to them, to us. Come on. Oh, you can do better than that. Day to me. Happy birthday, everybody. Happy birthday to you. Okay, y'all go sit down. Amen, amen. We certainly asking that you pray for my wife, uh, Judy, and Reverend Mario, and Ebony. They are out of town. We finally getting those two away to school, and my wife just want to follow them to the end. She didn't want to leave when we, I went to Ohio, and 
I came back home, but Judas said, I'm going on to North Carolina. Amen. So, amen. This is really our official first uh, Sunday without them. She was supposed to go last week, but they changed it. So, both of them had to be there pretty much at the same time. So, as quick as they dropped um, Ravon off, they had to leave and go take um, Raven. Amen. We are so thankful. So, pray that God will give them safe journey back. Amen. We know that Sister Vicki had death in her family, one of her relatives. Amen. And um, we don't know the um, arrangements as of yet, but we will be letting you know more later on. Amen. We are looking for a great time in the Lord today. How many already have the Lord's Supper? If you do not have the Lord's Supper, amen, make sure you hold up your hand. And the urchins will make sure that you get yours because immediately after the benevolence, we will be doing the Lord's Supper. Amen. Yeah. Amen. 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 We're going to ask you right now if you will begin to. Prepare yourself for mission and benevolent offering. This is an offering that even if you have a penny and that's all that you have, you should partake in this. Because God blessed even those that had the least to give. So no matter what you have to give, whether it be a penny, or whether it be a million dollars, feel free right now to be a blessing to someone else that may be in need of this offering someday. It could be me. It could be you. It could be people on another side of the planet. We don't know. We look across the highways and the byways and we've seen floodings and fires and accidents and killings. One never knows when it might be them. So give freely, cheerfully into our mission and benevolent offering so that our mission can be received in a way that's pleasing and acceptable unto God. Our ushers are on the side. They're coming. God has been so good to us. I thank God that we are able to get the twins off. It's a bittersweet moment. Uh, I fought back the tears as long as I could. Once they were on the road, it was a ball of crying for me. But... Um, I told them, I said, let me tell you something. Whenever you need me, just hit 411. Some people say, why 411? I said 411 for this purpose, that I don't need words. I just know that you need me. I didn't want to say 911 because 911 may have shook me up and may have said that it was an emergency and that I needed to be on. But 411 says it might be grandma that I just need prayer. It might be grandma that I need a couple of dollars. Grandma, it just might be that I need to hear your voice. So send me 411 so then I can respond to you to get the information that I need to reply to. I love them, I cherish them, I applaud them. Every single one of our seniors, our graduates that have gone forth to extend their education, we thank you. And now God, we thank you for this mission and benevolent offering. We thank you for every seed that was sown. We thank you for every blessing that it will take part in. God use it to manifest us in our mission. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. We're going to have Sister April come with a song, and following that, our pastor will come forth 
with our Lord's Supper. And as Sister April's coming with a song right now, we're going to ask you to prepare your minds for what Jesus did on Calvary. He included you and me. He gave us a chance to have life eternal. So as Sister April sings and Pastor prepares his heart to deliver, set your minds on Calvary and all the good that it done for you and I.
Amen. Amen. I, I, I don't know about you, but every once in a while, I stop and lift my hands. This morning, I thought about how good God's been, and I said, Lord, I just got to tell you, God, that you've been good. And I, I was just walking through the house this morning by myself saying, God, you've been good. My God, my God. Amen, amen. Hopefully you are ready for the Lord's Supper. First Corinthians, the 11th chapter, beginning with verse 23, reading from the New King James Version, simply says, For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, the Lord Jesus. On the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he said, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do proclaim the Lord's death till he come. Watch this, watch this. And we, this is the part that we need to examine ourselves. Verse 27 says, Wherefore, whosoever eat this bread or drink of this cup of the Lord unworthily in an unworthily manner will be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. 28 says, let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he who eats and drinks judgment, judgment on himself, not discerning the Lord's body. And I like what verse 30 says, because if you do it and you're not taking under consideration what you're doing it for, verse 30 says, for this reason, some other translation says, for this cause, many are weak and sick among you, and many sleep. Lord, we ask now that you change this fruit of the vine and this bread from a carnal use to a spiritual use. So they took the bread and blessed it and said, take, eat. This is my body which is broken for you. Amen. Likewise, also he took the cup, saying, drank ye all of it. This is the blood of the New Testament. Well, this is my blood. Father, we thank you. We know that there's healing in the blood. So God, somebody might be waiting on a healing. So, somebody might be waiting right now. What can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood. What, what can keep me pure within? Nothing but the blood. There's healing in the blood. There's deliverance in the blood. Lord, we receive deliverance, we receive healing, but most of all, God, we do this in remembrance of Jesus' shed blood. Amen. Amen. Because of Calvary and the unselfishness of an omniscient God that we all are here today. I dare not come into the temple and not give him praise. I dare not think that the reason I'm standing here is because of something that I did myself. 
but it was on Calvary <laughs> that he looked beyond all of my faults and he saw the need. My mom and my dad used to say to me, live ready. I didn't understand it then, but as life began to take its toll and I began to age, I understood what live ready meant. And granny came behind them and she said, baby, if you live ready, you'll be ready. So I encourage each of you today to take the challenge to live ready because of Calvary. Our program right now calls for scripture and a prayer and usually we can call on another minister to do it but here am I, send me. I'll go. Our scripture this morning is coming from Psalms 34. I, 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 I'm just excited with the fact that not only was I here last Sunday to hear the announcement, but I'm here this Sunday to accept the invitation and respond. My RSVP is very important. It's important that we came across highways and byways. We came through weeks and days and hours and minutes and seconds of heat that they told us on the news could take you out if you stayed out in it too long. But we read in Sunday school that there's a new home. I'm, I'm, I'm going to leave that alone. I, I, I'm going to leave that alone. That there's a new home. That I won't have to worry about how hot it is. And I won't have to worry about whether or not the sun is shining. Because I'll be with the S-O-N and G-O-D. But I... I, I, I'm going to leave that alone, but my RSVP to the announcement is very important to me. I'm one of the scripture says, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make a boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Now, I need you to do this. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. I said magnify, give him glory with me. Let us exalt his name together. God, I thank you for another opportunity. God, we thank you for every listening ear. God, we thank you for every bowed down head, for every humble heart. God, we thank you because you're God. God, whatever we've done to make you upset with us or to not recognize you as being the God of glory, God, we ask right now that you forgive us. Hear the order of our prayers, God. Hear the whispers of our hearts. God, we've got loved ones that will be traveling to and fro over the highways and byways. God, we disperse angels right now to see them safely across the highways and the byways. No danger, no problem, just joy and safe travel. God, we've got somebody that may be among us this morning that came with a heavy heart. God, lift up heavy hearts. 
God, we've got some that may be in mourning. God, give comfort to the mourners. God, we've got some, God, that just came because they didn't have anything else to do. Well, God, we want to give them something today so that the next time they come, they'll have something to do. And that something to do will be to magnify your name. God, we give them this right now, God. God, press into each household whatever it needs. In Jesus' name, it is so. God, we thank you. God's been so good. He's been so, 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 so good. I just can't thank him enough. We're going to prepare now for our tithes and our offering. Bible says, bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in mine house. And then he challenges us. He says, if you do this, prove me now. He said, I bet you if you do this, I'll open the windows of heaven and I'll pour you out blessings that you won't have room enough to receive. I'm a witness, he'll do it. Trust him. Go with him. Stand by him. Believe in him. On the 26th day of this month, I'll be 64 years old. In 2003 or four, I don't even remember what year it was, the doctor looked in my face and told me I had six months to live. He said, you have a rare blood condition. Watch. Ah. He said, your red blood cells don't replenish quickly. So this condition only gives somebody about six months. And I looked at him, and I was by myself, and I said, you're talking about the blood that runs through these veins. But I know a man that shed some blood. And all I got to do is believe and trust in him. And I promise you, doctor, you'll see me in month number seven. The enemy wanted to take me out then. But it was the blood. It was the blood. It was the blood on Calvary that I leaned to, that I, that I washed in, that I knelt down to, that I trusted in, that said, I've got to work for you. So here I stand. You know why? Because I tried him and I found out he's all right. I lost a lot of things going through, but I never lost my joy. There are moments when we sit on the side of the bed. There are moments when we lay on our face. There are moments that we just walk and wring our hands. But I stop by to tell you, you, particularly woman of God, you, everything is going to be all right. Stop worrying. Don't cry. I'm sorry, Pastor, but, but, but God said it's going to be all right. 
You're looking at a supernatural miracle. You're looking at somebody who knows that when the doctor says no, he'll still say it. I just stop by to tell you, it's going to be all right. And before you leave here today, I just want to embrace you and to let you know that what he's done for me, he can do even greater for you. God, we thank you. We thank you for this woman of God. God, we thank you for the tithes and the offerings. Because, God, we took it in ourselves to try you and see. God, you have opened up so many windows that man tried to close. God, we thank you for every giver. God, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Oh, God, you're in the place. God, move like never before. Whew, God, I thank you for seeing through your eyes, God. God, I thank you. Ah, God, I thank you for hearing through your ears, God. God, I thank you just because you're God. Thank you for your presence. God, I thank you. It's time for a word. Before we bring the pastor and his sermonic sermon, I'm going to press on Sister April ah, one more time to come forth. Excuse me, Pastor. I can't wait to after service. I've got to embrace this woman of God right now. So why I praise you, I lift you up, and I magnify your name. That's why my heart is filled with praise. I cared for me in such a special way that's why I praise you I lift you up and I magnify your name that's why my heart is filled with praise My heart, my mind, my soul belong to you. You pay the price for me. Way back on Calvary, that's why I praise you. 
So I, my heart is filled with praise. Well, my heart, my mind, my soul belong to you. You pay the price for me. Way back on Calvary, that's why I pray. So I, my heart is filled with praise. Well, Jesus went to Calvary to save a wretch like you and me that's alive. to Calvary to save a wretch like you and me that's love that's love yes they hung him high they stretched him wide he hung his head for us he died that's love
Come on and say amen again. Come on and say amen again. Thank you, April. Thank you. Amen. Amen. We are thankful for all of you and our visitors. Amen. Uh, my friend, the preacher over there, your name just left me. Preacher man, God bless you. It's always a blessing to have my very good friend, Deacon Coffee. Amen, who this brother is always there for whatever I need. Amen, he is a blessing indeed to me, and it's good to have you with us this morning. 
Amen. Remember, you can um, watch this service later on, not today, but perhaps, I don't know if it will be Monday or Tuesday. Amen. So this morning, I'm down here because I have illustrations. I got a little of this and a little bit of that and amen, a little of everything. You know, last week, Reverend Chow, she just, oh, she did preached the word, didn't she? She preached a powerful message. And she preached last Sunday that it all started in the garden. She said it all started in the garden. And that got to ringing in my ear and and, and, and Rita would tell you, we, 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 we hit on a little bit of that, amen, in Bible class. Then with Sister William, amen. We, we hit on that in Bible class in Genesis because it all got started in the, the garden. I tried to get away from it, and I tried to get away from that garden, but I just couldn't get away from the garden, so... This morning, you're going to get part two of In the Garden. Look at somebody and say, part two of In the Garden. Amen. The scripture this morning uh, I'm going to select, we'll be using quite a few scriptures. So get your pens out, be, get everything so that when you go home, you can study this for yourself. In Genesis the second chapter, Genesis, the second chapter, reading, starting with verse 8 and 9, New King James Version, it says, The Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden, and there he put the man whom he had formed out of the ground. The Lord God made every tree grow that is pleasant in the sight, in the every tree to grow. I get it right after a while. That is pleasant to the sight, good for, good for food. The tree of life, oh my God, was also in the midst of the garden. And, and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And if you look at verse 16, it simply says, And the Lord God commanded man, saying, Of every tree of the garden you may freely eat, but of the tree of knowledge and of good and evil you shall not eat, for in the day you eat of it you shall surely die. Amen, amen. I thought that really for a subject this morning, and I got an illustration, and I, you all can kind of get my little white table right there, uh, Brother Jack. I don't have Michael here this morning to mess me. Pull my little white table out. But for a subject, get ready to write this down. Amen. And while they are getting, the, getting my little table out here, Sister Miller have already messed up on that restraining order. It didn't last no time. And I think Brother John, he helped her. And she, she can't, she's, she's guilty. If, if she had to be put in prison, she would be in prison, not working. It didn't even last a week. Did it? Did it? And I thank you, Sister, Son, uh, Sister Shonda, for helping me. But it didn't even last a week, did it? She broke it the same, I think it was the same day. Amen. Amen. Just put it right here in the front. Lord, how much? So keep her lifted up in prayer. Amen. Amen. My subject is, it started in the garden, and it ended in the garden. It started in the garden, and it ended in the garden. I'm giving you time to write that down. And if you want to put something in parenthesis, put in there, there was joy and sadness in the garden. 
why it started in the garden, the garden of Eden, and it ended in the garden. There's something special about gardens. I grew up down south eating out of the gardens. We really ate from the gardens down south. We had some of everything that you want to think of in the garden. And come to think about it, Sister Lula Thurman, she have a garden, believe it or not, right in her back in the back lawn, she got a big garden back there. She's got cucumbers in there. She got squash. She's got tomatoes. She's got uh, string beans up on the on the thing. She got some of everything. She got okra in her garden. And every time I go back, I go back there and check out the tomatoes. And she got the big cucumbers. And she been eating. She been sending food down south from her garden. And the people down south are the one got the guards. And she got a box going this way and a box going that way, all from her garden. There's something special about gardens. But I don't want to talk about the gardens that are here and get you hungry and think about eating uh, food. Because today I really want to talk to you about gardens in the Word. Come on and think with me just for a little while. Did you know that there are really, when you look and you do some research, there's really three main gardens that I want to talk about today. The gardens that I want to talk about today, and, and perhaps you really never really thought about it, but the Scripture really is in the middle, and I want to give you a good example, in the middle, we, we, I want to talk about these three gardens, but the, the gardens is really like bookends. Watch this. Here come my first little tree in the garden. And then you want to look at another tree in the garden. Now, I said that it started in the garden. And, and, and the gardens is like bookends. So bookends is what holds the books together. But neither do I just want to talk about the two gardens. I'm going to tell you about a third god. All right? So we got the bookends. And in the middle, we got the word. We got everything that happened from the Garden of Eden all the way, and I'm going to tell you about the third garden in, in Revelation. But then we're going to talk about this second God. In the first garden, when God had said to Adam, he said, don't eat of the tree of knowledge. You shouldn't even eat of that tree. And, and man just didn't want to do right. Remember, this is the beginning, the very first God that we really want to talk about. And then the first book in is the Garden of Eden. And the last God is in Revelation. Revelation is the 22nd chapter. And we're going to get there, but if you do research and if you search and say how many gardens are in the Bible, you're going to end up in Revelation, the second chapter. Oh, my God. Revelations, the second chapter, one and two. But we're going to talk about that a little bit later on. Crucial. It's crucial, this middle God. Because Adam and Eve, they just messed down. Isn't it something that God had put them there and everything was pleasant, everything was good to look at, everything they needed was right there in the garden. But when Adam and Eve messed up, they was driven out of the garden because when they left the garden, that broke the fellowship with God and man. And we needed to find a way back 
to get to God because they are now, they didn't have that fellowship and walking in the coolness of the evening and being there to talk with God in the garden. But then that's where, after they messed up, this middle garden comes in. And who can tell me what this middle garden is? Have you really thought about this middle garden? We would not have needed a middle garden if they hadn't messed up in the first garden. But since they had messed up, there's another garden called what? The Garden of Gethsemane. Oh, God. There is the second garden, the Garden of Gethsemane. Think with me, if you will. We can escape the garden of Eden, but think about it. We find joy, we find grace, we find presence as we go a little bit further because this second garden is not in the Old Testament. This second garden is in the New Testament because we're talking about the garden of Gethsemane. But the thing of it is, we all know that we will spend eternity somewhere, but I want to spend eternity in that last garden up in the new Jerusalem. Come on and think with me, if you will. You see, Jesus in the garden of Gethsemane, he had to submit. He had to go through humbling himself. He didn't really want to go through this garden of Gethsemane because it was too much agony. It was too much hurt. It was too much that he had to go through just to get you and I back to where God, where Adam had messed up. When you look into the Word and you consider, consider uh, yourself dead to sin but alive to God in Christ Jesus. And that, if you look at Romans 6 and 11, for Romans 6 and 23 says, For the wages of sin is death, O oh God, but the gift of God is what? Eternal life. Watch it, if you will. We're in the middle of the garden of Gethsemane. Genesis 3 and 8, O oh God, talks about how they had messed up. But watch this. We never would have needed the Garden of Gethsemane if Adam had messed up in the Garden of Eden. Because in the Garden of Gethsemane, oh God, a lot of things took place. When you really want to look at this, watch this, watch this. God had created two perfect people, Adam and Eve, put them in a special perfect God. Everything was wonderful. There, there were no problems. There was nothing, but they messed up. For Romans 5 and 12 said, therefore, therefore, as through one man's sin, sin entered into the world, and through sin, so death passed up, what? On all men, because of one man's sin. That's Romans 5 and 12. Write that down. The second God is important, even though it is in the New Testament. In Luke 22 and 44, you find here God was on his way in the Garden of Gethsemane. And God had said, when he, in Luke 22, he says, my soul, oh God. And I also want you to look at not only Luke 22 and 44, but look at Mark 14 and 34. Jesus, it lets us know that Jesus was in the garden and he was going through agony and he prayed the prayer. If, I, I, in other words, let me put it my way, if it be possible, yeah. Yeah. take this yeah. cup away from me. 
And the word tells us that he was sweating and the sweat was not blood, but it looked as if it was blood. This down there in the garden of Gethsemane and Jesus had to submit. He said, never mind, never mind, not my will, but your will be done. I want you to know that a lot happened in the garden. There was betrayal in the garden because Judas betrayed Jesus with the kiss in the garden. There was an enemy in the garden because Peter was so upset that he cut off the man's ear and he was angry at Jesus. There was compassion in the garden because Jesus put the man's ear back on. It was in the garden. A lot was happening in the garden. Jesus was doing all of this to bring man back, oh my God, to his rightful place because Adam and Eve had messed up Jesus now in the garden of Gethsemane going to try to make things right all because of you and I all because of sin that second God in the garden of Gethsemane Jesus he, he, he says not my will but thy will be done. You ever really got to thinking about you want to do stuff your way and you don't want to go through something? You said, okay, God, not my will, but your will be done. And Jesus, he surrendered. He submitted to God's will. Now watch this. And you might not have even thought about this, but right there in the garden of Gethsemane, there was, if you look at John 19, 44, John 19 and 41, there was another garden in near the garden of, in Gethsemane, there was the tomb. Jesus was buried in a garden. Watch this. And it was right there near the garden of Gethsemane. It said the place of Jesus' crucifixion was near a God. It was a place where no one had never used it. It was also in the God. You hadn't even thought about that, had you? Right there, we see that in the Garden of Gethsemane, Jesus, that was the place where they buried him in a tomb that had never been used. Now you want to you you better keep up with me in scripture. If you want that, you just go to John 19 and 41. Let me tell you, let me tell you, things happen in the garden of Gethsemane. Jesus, he surrendered in the garden of Gethsemane. And but yet he said, not my will, but thy will be done, which means he went on to Calvary. And he was crucified, and he was died, and he died right there. Now watch this, watch this. That means that Jesus also rose near the garden, or in the garden, because John 19:41 said that that's where you know it, that's where they put him in the tomb that has never been used. So Jesus, and I want you to really watch this thing here now, because this right here going to let you know that it had to be in the tomb because after the crucifixion, after Jesus rose, if you look please at John the 20th chapter, verses 14 through 7, 14 through 17, watch what it says. Just listen. This is John the 20th chapter, verses 14 through 17. This is after Jesus had died and after Jesus rose. It says, she turned to leave. We're talking about Mary and them when they had went to the tomb. It said, she turned to leave and she saw was someone standing there. It was Jesus. This is right after the resurrection. But she did not recognize him. Dear woman, why are you crying? This is Jesus talking to her. Why are you crying? Jesus asked her, who are you looking for? She thought that he was a God. Why did she think that he was a God? Because she was right there in 
that God. See how this thing coming together? She thought that Jesus was a gardener. And sir, she said, if you've taken him away, tell me where you put him and I will go and get him. 16, Jesus and Mary. <laughs> Jesus said, she turned to him and cried out, Rabbi, which is in the Hebrew for teacher. And he said, don't cling to me, Jesus said, for I have not yet ascended to the Father, but go find my brothers and tell them I am ascending to the Father and your Father to my God and your God. Didn't a lot happen right there in the Garden of Gethsemane? We never really thought about it, did we? There was a garden right there but next to the crucifixion. And then when he got up and Mary and them got there leaving and they got ready to leave and they saw Jesus standing there and they was afraid they didn't even, they thought he was just a gardener, a worker, but it was Jesus. Oh, God, I want you to know that. Don't get confused because Jesus is always with you. He's always near because he said that he would never leave us and that he will never forsake us. He is always near. Watch this thing now. Watch this. And then we had to have the Garden of Gethsemane because they messed up in the Garden of Eden. And because of their mess up, watch this, watch this. The first Adam messed up, and the second Adam had to clean it up. <laughs> watch this thing, watch this thing. And if you want some scripture there, write down 1 Corinthians 15 and 45. You will find that because it talks about the first Adam and the second Adam. The first Adam messed up because it, 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 Adam all died, but then we needed another Adam, and his name is Jesus. In Jesus all live the first Adam, my God. And then we look at the second Adam. And I was talking to someone, they said, I didn't know anything about that being a second Adam, but read your word. It's right there in 1 Corinthians 15, 45, the first Adam and the second Adam. Oh, God, we're trying to go somewhere, and I'm almost finished. But now, this third God, you never can make it to the Third God, if you didn't have to go through the second God, because the first God messed up. If the first God would have stayed clean, that the first God wouldn't let sin enter in, you never would have needed the Garden of Gethsemane. But because the first Adam messed up, you got the second Adam coming through in the Garden of Gethsemane. Are you all with me? Am, am I making any sense here? And, and then when you look at Revelations, 22nd chapter, verses 1 and 2, it says, and it says, he showed me a river clear as crystal. Its water was the water of life. The river came from out of the throne of God, and from the land it flowed down the middle of a wide avenue along the river banks. On either side grew trees. The tree bore 12 kinds of fruit, and every month it brought forth fruit. The leaves of the tree, they was healing, for the people. And if you look there, you're going to find the tree of life, oh God, right there up in glory. That's when, that's the new heaven that we was talking about this morning. That's what we were talking about this morning that we're trying to get to, this new God. Because when the morning was saying that, John said, I looked and I saw a new heaven coming down and the old heaven had passed, the old things had passed away and it was saying, now where's Jesus? He's coming down and he's going to make his home here with us. I've got a new home that's 
waiting for me because the bridegroom cometh and we are the bride that's waiting. The church is waiting. Jesus is coming. There is a garden. And I tell you, the garden of Eden. Watch this. It water. It was watered by the water there and the roots and everything in the garden of Eden. That's how it got its water. But the new garden, the garden in heaven, it didn't need the water because Jesus, the word said he is the water. He, Jesus, he even talks about the, the water that flows from his belly. You don't need everything that you need. It's in the new. Oh, God. Mm. I'm talking about a place where it says no more crying there, no more dying there, no more sorrow there. And Sister Grant reminded us this morning because there ain't going to be no more sorrow because she said that death itself is going to be thrown in the lake of fire. And if death is not there, I got Jesus. I got everything I need. I got everything I need. It's in the garden, the leaves, the tree of life, right there in the garden. You got life in the garden because Jesus is there. You got everything you need because Jesus is there. And I got news for you. You don't have to wait till you get there because every day you wake up, you got Jesus. Everywhere you walk, you got Jesus. And you got him because great is he that is on the inside of me than he that's in the world. I've got Jesus. But you see, right now, even though I got him, we living in a messed up, broken down world. And, and we're going to have our sorrows and we're going to have our sickness and we're going to have our pain. And even the Christians going to die. But as Susan Grant said one day, hey, yeah. no more crying and no more dying and nothing else. When I get there, I will see him face to face. Watch this. I'm not through. Lord, have mercy. I think it's here. So let me give you some conclusions to my, to my, to my, to my sermon here. Now, I, I got to thinking about this thing. In my conclusion, the Apostle Paul plainly states that we are redeemed, bought back from sin, from death through the precious blood of Jesus as the lamb. What a glorious time. But he was manifested in the last days for you and I. Write down 1 Peter 1, 18 through 20. Listen to this. Listen to this. Yes, the seed of a woman is the way back to Eden. The seed that would bring forth precious life, a humbling death through a glorious resurrection. The heavenly Father will make it. Now, I believe, my brothers and sisters, it'll all be over after a while. But until then, I want you to be careful. Oh, my God. Until then, be careful what you bite off. Don't bite off sin. Don't bite off addiction. Once you bite, it get good. And mm, it makes you want to take another bite. You said, you ever started out? You say I'm just going to eat a little bit. And then it get real good. That's just how sin is. It make you keep on. And you get deeper and deeper. Satan knew how. Now, Scripture didn't say there was no apple. It could have been orange. I don't know what it was. But I'm going to use the apple. The funniest thing. Satan tried to mess with me that. He said, what if you bite? You know your teeth ain't no good. What if they break? <laughs> then, 
I said, well, I'm glad I ain't got no posture. If I did, I might leave the posture in the apple. But Satan knows how to tempt you yeah. in whatever you start to do. Yeah. And I wrote this down. Be careful what you bite into. The first glass that looks glittery. Not everything that glitters is gold. Especially if it would harm your relationship with God. Sometimes we can eat too much, <laughs> run our blood pressure up. Right. We got to know how to do that, right? right? In moderation. Some people say, I'm just going to try it one time. I'm just going to go out on this date with her just one time. <laughs> um, you go on that date. Ooh, that wasn't too bad. I'm, I'm just going to go the second time. Oh. And you find yourself, it don't have to be a date. It can be anything that is not pleasing to God. It don't have to be sex. It don't have to be smoking. It don't have to be drinking. But anything that will harm your relationship with God Mm. Don't bite. <laughs> now, how was my message? I thought I was through. I'm not through yet. It was this morning, Sister Grant, and I'm, I'm sitting there this morning, and guess what came to my mind? I come to the garden alone while the dew was still on the roses. Now, that song, I come to the garden alone, we sing it without ever realizing or wondering where did it come from? Why did we sing it? That very song is sung at many funerals. It is sung because of the comfort. Now watch this. The man that, um, that uh, penned these words was Charles C. Austin. Charles, yeah. And it says here, and I did a lot of reading. I even, you know how I do a lot of research and I wanted to know, and it talked about this man. He was reading his Bible, and it said that he read John 20, 11 through 18. Because when you look at John 20, 11 through 18, I think that's, that's when, uh, at the, at, at the um, you know, the resurrection, and, and look at John 20, 11 through 18. I don't even have my Bible, and I had wrote it down. But there was comfort there because Mary, you know, it needed some comfort. And the words that he penned there, John 20, the 11 through 18, that's when Mary had her encounter, Mary Magdalene, with the risen Savior. And that's why I listen at, listen at the words, I come to the garden alone while the dew is still on the rose. And the voice I hear falling on my ear, the Son of God disclosed. He walks with me. He talks with me. And he tells me I am his own. And the joy we share, oh God, as we tarry there, none other has ever known. And then it goes a little further. He say he speaks, and the sound of his voice is so sweet, oh God. The birds hush their singing, and the melody that he gave 
to me within my heart is ringing. And he walks with me and he talks with me and he And of thy come on, come on. As ever and he walks with me and he talks with me and he tells me I am his I heard in my spirit this morning and I, when I was trying to sing it I heard Vicky in my spirit you know how Vicky on the voice I heard and I'm at home all by myself laughing because I'm imagining Vicky singing it and I think you know, I heard Vicky all in the voice Jesus went to the cross, shed his blood for your sin and my sin, and he rose with all power in his hand. It all started in the God. It ends in the God. But he had to go through to get to, oh God, how was my message? Now I'm really through. We thank God for the garden. Even though we get mad at Adam, we have to thank Adam because it had not been for Adam We'd have never had the Garden of Gethsemane. The door of the church is open. I invite you to come in, understand, believe, and worship with God, with us. Paul picks up his pen in Romans chapter 10 around verse 9, and he says, if you confess with your mouth and you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. We offer you this salvation. Come, join us. Be a part of Pine Grove where everybody is somebody. And Paul picked his pen up one more time, and I believe it's around chapter 12 in Romans, around verse 2. And he says, be ye not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. So in the garden of your mind, we need you to know that everything, that verse ends up by saying what everything is good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. We offer you salvation at Pine Grove. If you're in the, if you're in the sanctuary and you'd like to join, you can show your hand and we'll come and we'll get you and we'll talk to you about this plan of salvation and the God that went to the garden. He sent his son for you and I. What a word, Pastor. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Y'all be careful biting on them apples. <laughs> um, I just want to remind the women that we will meet on Saturday at 11 o'clock. Our, our topic for this month is faith and fasting. But I want to tell you something, women. I said, the Lord has placed it in my spirit that we need to deal with one at a time. And we're going to deal with faith first. 
So meet me at 11 o'clock in the fellowship hall on Saturday, just for an hour, as we talk about faith in God. And then we'll talk about fasting at a day, at another date that's appointed unto us. Do we have any visitors with us today? Do, can we, oh my God. <laughs> we thank God for your presence. We thank you for being with us this morning. And we hope that something was shared with you as we walk you through the garden that will allow you to come back in the doors and have faith and worship and a relationship and a fellowship with us, with God. Um, I did not get a chance to give my benevolent offering. I'll give it to Deacon Jack and he can turn it in because I, I don't give to be seen, but I do want to be seen given. We're going to turn it back over to the pastor for his final words and the benediction. Let every heart say amen. I thought you were going to do it, but remember there is no, we don't have any food on the outside today. We're kind of going through some changes to get some different uh, ways of, um, but he won't, they're not bringing it today. Hopefully it might be next week. I'm not sure. But remember you can go uh, online later. I don't think it would be today. And again, we want to give Elijah and uh, Sister Ashley a hand because they kind of carried us through today. Amen. I know. Let's get ready to go home. Amen. No, I didn't bring any extra apples because I don't want you all. I don't want to tempt anybody to bite off apples. Rita wants the apples. Lord have mercy. Sister William, we got to deal with her Tuesday. Amen. Good to see all of you. God bless you, all of our visitors. And um, there is one book that uh, we all write. I, I, I challenge you to read the book of Galatians because we're going to be dealing with that every once in a while, even so in our um, maybe in Bible class. But read Galatians. If you take time to Really read the book of Galatians. It's not that much. I promise you, you would be blessed. And then you're going to go to Ephesians. But read Galatians. It's not that. It's just a little thin book. And you will be blessed. Ready to go home? Now unto him. Oh, and please pray for Deacon Ira Jackson. He um, put Sister Jackson in the hospital on yesterday, and the man has just worked himself down, and he has been just so faithful, and Brother Jackson do all of that work, and then he, at 95 or 6, he's out there cutting all of his lawn. He don't know how to quit, so please pray for him. He really needs your prayers. Amen. Amen. Now unto him that is able to keep us from falling. May he lead us, guide us, and keep us until we all come together again. Say amen. amen. 